You do. <laughs> so yeah, it started, I suppose. Yeah, eight seconds, eight seconds. So yeah, it's live now. It's time to say hello. So hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's a big honor for me and for my colleague. I'm Natalia and I'm Alicia or Elis. So, and today we're talking about um, our quite interesting uh, topic. So, how can we connect with different students? And Alicia will start our webinar. So, please. So, I see so many people. I right right where you come from. It's so it's so interesting to know where you come from. Uh, hi there. Oh my God, we have such a big group. Eh, yeah. Hola a todos. Parece que es España, ¿no? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Let's see. Toronto. Toronto. Oh my God. Yes. So write just place where you are or maybe where you, where you come from. Anything that we know. España. Perfect. So many beautiful countries. Colombia. Yeah. Wow. Los Angeles. Ah, I can see Italy. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. <laughs> Ciao. Natalia, have a look. Somebody from Russia. Oh, really? Yeah. So we have yes, the official yes. welcome, right? So we start maybe. Slowly. Yeah. Great idea. Let's start. Yeah, we can start slowly. So mm -hmm. we divided today's uh, presentation in two parts and the first one part, the first one I will be having and then after me right away, Natalia. So just give me one second to share my screen um, and then let's let's start. Okay. Okay. Uh, Natalia, can you tell me if it's uh, yeah, visible? Yeah, yeah great. Yeah. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on our presentation. Uh, I'm very happy to see you here, such a big group. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Alice, and as a little girl, uh, I had many dreams uh, of what I would become when I grew up in, uh, and being a teacher uh, always left a smile on my face. So I graduated uh, German studies at the University of Gdańsk in Poland. And since then, until today, I have been working in teaching and tourism altogether. So first of all, it's a real honor to be and work as a teacher on the italki platform. And thank you very much uh, to the platform for inviting me to this webinar. I hope we will have today many interesting insights together. And so let's get started. So the title of our webinar is how do I connect with any student? Uh, so this part has actually, um, this is me, and this is what we know already. Yeah. And as a small warm up, well, uh, this topic today that we are just having, it, it's so important because it has positive uh, effects on a students and on a teacher. There is nothing more wonderful than simply learning a foreign language individ individual class and then be able to decide on topics close to us, uh, to focus only what we like and value and what we need. And very important, uh, we want to bring the individual learning experience to the higher level, making them um, really uh, unable uh, to to co uh, to to copy, let's say, um, compared to apps or to standard mass courses that are available on the market. Uh, as you see already, for a, a, a teacher. It also it is also very valuable because having the right information um, as a base to create a unique lesson and connect with a, with the students is crucial as the teacher as you can see on my screen can uh, accelerate the language learning process very important anticipate possible problems and of course 
um, by using appropriate teaching methods and, um, and techniques. So that's why it's so important to have it in mind. So uh, today's, uh, today's webinar will be, my part will have like three parts, uh, the first and the second part, uh, I will be doing it together. So it means we will focus here on characteristics and habits of students from different backgrounds, cultures and learning levels. And together, of course, with advisors, with common strategies uh, that you can use to engage different students, right? And this this part will take approximately 20 to 30 minutes. And then uh, we speak about tools uh, that you can use uh, with your students as you work together. And this part will take uh, just only a few minutes more. So the first part and the second part, let's, let's, let's just do it. So my very first question uh, my, as, a, as a teacher is, who is my student? So now I have the question for audience, uh, what, what fac uh, factors, areas or categories to look at uh, would be for you value, val valuable as a teacher to make your individual lesson a, a wonderful experience. Remember, wonderful experience is something that uh, we want to have, which means connection on multiple levels. So this is my question for you. So yeah, so yeah. Can you repeat the question to the audience? Yes. So think about uh, what factors, uh, areas, you can call it also categories to look at or topics or informations would be for you important or valuable uh, to have if you want to have a wonderful experience uh, with your students, to connect with your student. Uh, what topics? Yeah, we yeah. have, we have good, um, good answers like English, culture, hobbies, passions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Job, perfect. Yeah, yes, yes. So uh, here in today's presentation, uh, we decided. Here is the question. I forgot to put it before. Hmm. <laughs> so um, in this presentation, me and Natalia, we decided to pick up following areas: uh, men, woman. Uh, culture, country, and place live. We decided to speak a little bit about motivations. We decided to speak about some psychological characteristics, a little bit about personalities, language levels, and of course about habits. So that was our decision for today. However, you remember that that like you can call it informations. I prefer to call it like uh, areas, factors uh, are important when you start to to to, to make your teaching. So uh, my part, uh, so let's speak a little bit about differences between women and men. And here, of course, I need to make uh, something like uh, something that we call disclaimer. I refer here in this presentation, of course, to general trends and that uh, we need to always pay attention uh, that like those trends, they are giving us some, let's say, direction, uh, direction paying attention that there are always num numbers, many individual exceptions. But in my personal experience, uh, teaching experience, like I found in, in my experience that I, I see that women are more likely to focus on connections, on uh, emotions in the class, um, this kind of topics. Uh, uh, men are more likely to focus on uh, learning goals, strategies and methods in a class. Remember, we have here some uh, tendency, but my question to you for the audience, how is your experience? Uh, do you have another experience? Do you see an, anything different from that? So let's wait for some answers. Yeah. 
So, Anisha, you know when you speak, I can, <laughs> can hear my echo. So, can you can you hear it or not? Um, it's when your microphone is on. Okay, got it. So yeah, we have uh, several opinions. Like for example, uh, Teresa is right in that in her experience, everything depends on each individuals. It's better not to generalize, generalize, and not to operate through gender stereotypes. What do you think about this, Alicia? I love it. This is this is such, such a great comment. So imagine you just want to just grab this topic, and uh, what would you do? Uh, what would you do? Because this is so, so important. So my my common strategy that I use very often uh, that um, being a woman or man gives me some small direction. But finally, I need to have like more um, details. So what I do from time to time, depending on, on the students, and I'm preparing a very special uh, survey, survey of um, uh, that allows me to know, to know what are favorite topics or areas that my student wants to talk or areas that my student doesn't want to talk. So I'm preparing a very special list of many, many, many topics, like to, to gather a little bit more uh, information. And this survey, survey I always try to do in the language, uh, in the language of instruction. In my case, this is of course German. This is the way how not only I can be closer to my student, to connect more because I know a little bit more, but my student already after the class making a survey can learn German. So this is my solution for this topic. Natalia, would you like to add something? Uh, yeah, it is re a really important topic, uh, but um, I also think that uh, we need to, uh, we don't need to divide uh, really much uh, female and uh, male students, because mo mostly they have the same motivations, the same uh, um, things, uh, precious things in life, so it's, it depends. Yeah, I agree with most of the students uh, and most of the audience in our chat there. Very nice. Yes? Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking about this very famous uh, um, quote, don't judge your book on the cover, on the cover. Yes. So uh, let's say when we speak about woman, men or any other topic, there is always some kind of small information to think you can have direction, preparing your class or creating your lesson. However, we need to always be very careful um, at each moment. So, okay, let's go to the next 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 part. I have chosen just only for this presentation. Uh, we try to speak about different culture, country, or place to live. So, my question for the audience: You see already on on the screen. Um, I pick up uh, two situations. What would you do if the student? lives in the country of the language she or he is learning. So what would you do? This is again a um, question for the audience because here in this presentation we can learn all together. What will be your solution to create a good lesson? And to connect with, uh, with the students. Do we have some comments, Natalia? Not yet, we're waiting for some. It means uh, that this is actually a tough question. So in this meantime, I can... Uh, yeah, you can, can, you can share your I can, knowledge, I suppose. I can, I can share you my personal insights. Uh, well, this is a very specific situation. Uh, we have a lot of situations like that. We have a student that is um, living in the country of the language is learning how, how, what can I do as a teacher? So in my case, uh, for me, it's very important to integrate the students in the society. Uh, 
It's very important. So for, the, for me, this is a number one. So how we can do that? Uh, teaching in the class, the student that's observing, hearing and reading is the most important part before you start to connect with people. So before you start to connect, try to observe the reality that is surrounding you. So once again, observing, hearing, and just reading anything. So in this, in this, in this moment, I will just pick up everything connected with observing, hearing, and reading to my classes. It, it means like for, for every single, every single um, lesson. This is this is my solution. So let's go to the uh, opposite situation. What would you do if the student does not live in the country of the language they are learning? Mm. So let's say I'm having a German uh, a student. The student is is is, uh, is learning German, but he lives, for example, well in Spain or in France or in Poland. Let's say, what would you do now? how to integrate this to create wonderful experience with you during the class do we have something let's give the audience some time do you have any idea natalia so uh, there is an idea of discipline that we need to, to uh, be quite disciplined uh, while learning and while studying language. What do you think about this, Alicia? Oh, discipline is like number one for me in each case. This is this is great. Discipline is very important. Well, in my case, yeah, this is so important. Also, you might have a good idea, like to consume more media in that language. Yes, this is this is this is what I would like to talk about. Uh, for me, in this case, uh, what I'm practicing is the awareness of of, of my students. For me, the the students' awareness is like number one, uh, because the student is not living in my case in Germany. So I need to create an environment uh, that will support his or her learning. Uh, so I need to include my um, include in my in my lessons or outside of the lessons, uh, following um, different 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 um, elements, and this is actually very easy to to show how how important is it to even to uh, to watch movies to watch movies any movies. Uh, Im imagine about reading. Uh, you see on the screen uh, paper, uh, newspaper, but any kind of you can read uh, on internet in your mobile phone. Uh, reading, reading local, local uh, news. Then of course uh, internet. It's so uh, amazing that we have the internet. So just only browsing the internet, watching YouTube channel. Um, and the next next thing I'd like to uh, the last thing I would like to add is of course finding a partner to talk to uh, and in first place to having a teacher is so crucial so important but of course if you have a partner a friend uh, that can support you can be there when you are just learning a language that will support you um, do we have any any uh, any news in, in comments, Natalia? Uh, let me have a look. Um, yeah, so again, talking about culture of the countries where the language is spoken, that's very nice uh, uh, to get them interested in reading newspapers, books. Yeah, we have uh, already talked about this. So um, I suppose uh, your ideas are quite similar to the audience ones. Mm hmm. OK, so then let's come to the next uh, to the next part. Mm -hmm. The next part is huge. We call it motivation. So as you see on the screen, a driving force that keeps us on track. So um, we both, Natalia and I, um, we speak today about motivation, however, in different aspects. Uh, in my case, I would like to show you yeah, like the difference when there is motivation and when there is no motivation. But firstly, we need to understand uh, 
yeah, we are teachers, so we understand. Um, but speaking about students, um, motivation is uh, is absolutely one of the greatest energy, uh, one of the most important factors uh, determining the learning process. Learners with clear motivation are more likely to stay on track. But what happens uh, when the motivation or sense of purpose uh, is not strong or clear enough? This is my question. Uh, it leads to procrastination, irritation, and sometimes even, even uh, to giving up the wish uh, to learn the foreign language. And this is something that we want to avoid and probably our student wants to avoid. So only appropriate action by the teacher or other external and motivators can uh, lead to change in attitude. But the thing is, this is an extremely difficult uh, and sometimes impossible task, given that the learning effectiveness is influenced primarily by well-developed motivation. So here on the screen, you see that uh, lack of motivation has a lot to do with how you process the reality of learning. Uh, in simple words, how are you feeling about your learning right now? Is it a nice experience for you? Uh, and here I would like to touch some, some, some uh, very, very common actually uh, situation uh, when a student wants to learn, there is a wish, there is a desire to learn, but somehow it's very hard to start. So very important, there is a wish and desire, but no action. So my question for the audience is, what would you do as a teacher? In this case, yeah, this is a little bit hard one because we are teachers uh, teaching a foreign language. Um, so, uh, uh, do you mean that uh, how do we need to motivate student or what? Anything, anything. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. that there is a wish and desire but no action. So, yeah. what would you do as a teacher? Let's wait for some ideas. Mm -hmm. Keeping in touch with students also outside the lesson. Yes. Mm -hmm. I talk give you uh, mm -hmm. fantastic tools so that you can uh, text your student, send messages. I'll give you some tip uh, to make this question more easy. And Think also, about you know, uh, there were two uh, messages uh, like setting small goals. Great. Mm -hmm also like it together and uh, yeah create a plan together great mm. to write down the motivation put it mm -hmm. on the desk yes mm -hmm. so that's really great each time when they want to procrastinate they see it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> agree Yes. It works even with my Italian language. I'm studying it now. Yeah, create a plan, start out. Mm. To mark concrete tasks instead of general suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great ideas. Okay. So then we can um, make this, this question a little bit more profound. We have here some... Um, I call it tips like what what could be behind what could be behind this this no motivation what is behind sometimes it is complicated but sometimes it can be very easy so we can detect um, four famous uh, factors the first one is work overload low energy mistakes or fear um, making mistakes and low self-esteem so here we can try to see if uh, there's something of those four they are of course much more but like they are very very common so 
my advice, because we need to remember I'm the German teacher uh, and what I can do in order to create uh, just very nice experience. So just have a look, thinking about workloaded. Hmm, if I see that the student is work overloaded, then maybe I will think twice before uh, sending him uh, happily, happily 100 uh, homeworks. Then I will decide what amount of homeworks uh, is it okay. Then secondly, of course, you can just uh, use very, very famous tools like you can learn together with your student um, time management, uh, to-do lists, how, how to, to, to make such a to-do list uh, in Italian, French, in English, right? Depending what, what language are you teaching. If you speak about low energy, this is a topic that I love actually. So if I detect that my students has a low energy, I start to speak about my favorite smoothies. And I think it's something amazing that um, you're teaching German, uh, Italian, French, or any other language like English, but also you can introduce something that has quality, something that makes life better. Uh, I am, for example, crazy about smoothies, about uh, nice uh, vitamin drinks. So we can do some recipes uh, during the lesson and make this experience much more different than, uh, than normally. Learning habits, low energy, um, how brain works, that the brain needs to just relax, recover, and it has its time like a stomach. If you speak about mistakes, again, this is actually my favorite topic because making mistakes is, um, is so misunderstood. Making mistakes, one, uh, one of the which is very important, it relates to the way uh, a, a mistake or error is perceived. And uh, our students, our student uh, or our student needs to understand that this is a part of the process, natural learning process. It is just there, it is very normal. Uh, we need to remember that like to, to tell him that he's not a pilot in a plane, he's not doing the operation in a hospital. So it is okay. He is safe with us making mistakes. Otherwise, um, motivation will slowly fade and uh, mistakes will lead just only to, the, to, the, to this kind of growing sense of frustration. Uh, you see Coke on the, on the picture. So what does has to do with mistakes? Well, we have many inventions on the world that were created by uh, default or by mistake. And this is so, so amazing. Um, and Coke or Coca-Cola is one of those uh, examples. And the last one is low self-esteem. Here I would like to have uh, some comments from the audience. Natalia, you think we can try? Uh, yeah. If we have a student that is having just low self-esteem? Yeah, that's a good question. I would definitely praise them. Like, good job. Well done. To, mm -hmm. to keep the, uh, them motivated. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe uh, any other ideas from the audience? I think that any person in life who are who is courage to start to learn something this is something absolutely amazing uh, yeah. this is a courage to want to learn something um, yeah definitely it needs time it needs much effort mm -hmm. so my strategy in this in this case like few few um, steps i do few of steps I do is like, uh, I want that the students feel uh, courageous by, uh, feel courageous by just simply being of aware of small victories. Uh, we think big, but we should think sometimes small. It means small victories, one victory, second victory, third victory. We need to really be aware that there are so many things we are doing just great. Uh, next, when you think about low self-esteem, think about all big people. 
uh, history of famous personalities. They are speaking a lot of time um, about uh, about difficult situations they they have been through. Uh, my favorite one in this in this in this topic, low self esteem, uh, is actually measuring system. Measuring system. That's why you see this uh, on my last picture. How you can measure? How you can measure your success? That will be the base uh, uh, for your not low self esteem, but for your victories, for your courageous uh, attitude. Very simple. Three questions. Where have you uh, already been? Where where have you already been? The second question is, where are you right now? Right now. And where are you heading? Heading, he this is head, heading, right? So learning, it's something like a journey. So we need to appreciate every single step. Uh, so if you, you have know, any can Sorry for interrupting. Uh, I saw an, in an interesting question. How to understand someone has low self-esteem? Are there any signals to understand? Mm, uh, I see lack of appreciation of, uh, of work. So the student is, is doing a great job, but doesn't see it. And you see in, a, in a his or her reactions like, even sometimes you do, oh great, you, you made such a, uh, so many, and uh, uh, there's like, there's like no happiness. It's where, when the students uh, has, a, has a high, high self esteem, it shows immediately. It's like on the other side, um, on the other side. So we see it in every single, every single uh, um, reaction, situation in sentences, because if you have a love system, you don't see it. You don't see it. You don't see your success. You don't see that you're making such a great job. And when you're doing great job, you're going for a negation. Like, ah, no, no, it's not true. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, lately, lately, I can, from my own experience, um, I I had the student. At the beginning, he's, he, he said, he, he said, like, I want to improve my pronunciation, number one, and grammar. Okay. So I put this information in my diary. And like after three months, when I see like, oh my gosh, he is, his pronunciation is so great. And I asked him, what is that you make you feel happy about German? And he said, well, I, I, I still don't speak German. And I and I realized like he even has forgotten uh, how he uh, what he what he said to me at the very beginning. He said he needs to improve the pronunciation, and his pronunciation was much more better than before. However, he was thinking of the final result. But for the to get the result, we need to have like uh, steps. We are at the beginning, then we are in the middle, and then finally somewhere. Or some some uh, some point in the future, we we will have our final result. I hope it was a little bit clear my answer. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, also nice idea. Like uh, students with self esteem can uh, say all the time, "I'm sorry," or even do not pronounce or anything. So, what do you think about this? Is this could be? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. And good point. Um, Vanessa told us that she uh, told her student not to compare themselves to others. This also makes sense. Yes, because uh, I like comparing to understand. Yes, you make comparison. Something is hot like a sun. You understand this. But every single person had has its own uh his or her own process of learning his or her own path right we are so different we are we are similar as as human beings but we are different we are individuals so comparison that was great that was great yeah absolutely great 
Okay. So finishing this type, this my slide, I can only say that, well, we just strengthen our, our strength and weaken our weaknesses. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, I agree with you in many points. <laughs> okay. So let's do some uh, exercise. Uh, Natalia, would you like to read out loud? Um, yeah, I can. Um, so beginners want to reach A2 level quickly because they want to impress and prove their worth as a person. They want to go very quickly with the material. They are only interested in very sophisticated language from level B. They become stressed and unmotivated when they see that they cannot achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. And what is the task? So, like, what should we do in this situation, right? Exactly. This is a question for audience. You have the situation, and it's very common right now because we have access to internet to the internet. Everything is around, right? So there is this tendency. Well, if I want, I can learn so much as I want, so fast as I want. So you have the situation. You have detected this kind of situation. What do you do? Yeah. Also, we have uh, some comment in Spanish language. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't speak Spanish. But I cannot see. I cannot see right now. Yeah. <laughs> Only Alicia speaks, not me. <clears throat> like I, I can see them later. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, will see it in our chat. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, student wants uh, to learn really quickly. Yeah. How? How can we help or is it possible? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is, this is so common situation right now, not 10 years ago, but right now. So, well, reality to connect with the re reality is again, crucial. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a calculator. Yeah, I'll give you yeah, an okay. very old one, but my favorite one. one. Uh, okay, so I give example for me from so, my side. So you know, uh, there is just a lack of time a bit, uh, and uh, the answers are appearing a little bit lately. So um, good point is that. Uh, um, so Alicia, can you please press nine or something like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, <clears throat> Teresa said that uh, she explained to the students that when it comes to learning language. We should go slowly rather than fast and quickly, um, okay. and uh, like to put prioritize quality okay. over quantity. So to make this answer, so what I'm doing here very fast to answer this question because we are running out of, out of the time. Uh, so here I just take my calculator, and here I'm just um, asking the students uh, how fast how fast would you like to uh, to learn. How many months do you think you, it will take to learn uh, to reach the A2 level? Or how much time do you think you need to reach your goal because you want to say it quickly? So, well, I tell you that for in my institute for to, to reach the A2 level for a German institute for um, for German, okay, like the uh, certificated institute for German language, which is a Goethe Institute, uh, you need to have 1,300 words. Yes. So what I do with this, I divide them. I divide it into months. I ask my students, in how many months do you want to do this? So I divide this into like three months, and then I have a result that I more or less 440 words you need to learn in a month. Then I divide that in the weeks, which is four, and then I have 108 words uh, in the week. Words you need to connect it with grammar, with with speaking. So my my actually my um, biggest biggest uh, point is yeah. like I it will help uh, me quickly to assess where, whether expectations of my students are realistic or not, and the awareness of my students is so important so that we can stay always on the same page, so that we are communicating all the time, and this is so important. 
Uh, and then the last part of my presentation, uh, here we have some useful researchers, uh, academic research, research gate, some psychology connected with uh, education or teaching. And my last part is uh, what tools are available to help build re re rapport between teachers and students. Uh, there are so many tools on the market. You can choose which one it's 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 reso it, it, it is resonating with you. I decided for just for easy one for Excel. So here you see um, what I do. Uh, disclaimer: the names you see here are not real, of course. I I just made them up for the sake of this presentation, right? So just to give you example. Um, so I use here the, the arrow to check uh, the tendencies, and then I just write all the information. Uh, to make a table with names of my students in this table, I write down information about each students. And as you see here, everything what I've what I've said before, it is here. So I can just just uh, clicking on this uh, arrow, I checked uh, what is the tendency. Motivation is for me, for example, the one of the most important one. I decide. Um, I ask students if it's work, curiosity, if he lives in in country, and so on. Um, but then I, I judge myself on my computer if I see the student as um, okay. I see this this student has a little motivation. Then I need to see if I with his or her reactions if, uh, if he or she is has has a low self esteem. If it's too much work, if it's work um, um, connected, then of course I have time. Uh, time. So how much time can you spend on your learning? This is for me so important to see the tendency between a motivation and uh, time spending. And the part of this uh, on this this table is also like uh, I put uh, the strength part of my students the weak part so which is which is something that we need to just work uh, on and i of course this is from previous pr presentation on italki platform that um, you can see here how the the the, st uh, the students is learning how he or she is learning um, okay this is my part so i'd like to thank you so much and now i can, can i can i personally ask you just ask one, you question. one question yes. uh, old school what do you mean under this uh, notice ah very good question old school and you see uh, it is uh, it has a very uh, good structure uh list of words there is a grammar there is a book uh this is this is like we used to learn uh, 10, 20 years ago. Uh, achiever, to understand more. Achiever is like a, a goal. Here is a goal. Here is, there is a strategy. We need to achieve the person who is achiever. We need to um, uh, we need to motivate strongly. Old school is as a person who would just like to sit on the table, make make many notes, uh, grammar, um, yeah. It was very interesting. I haven't uh, haven't known about this. Yes. So yeah, Alicia, it was great. Thanks a lot. I suppose that um, we can continue. Yeah. With yes, my I... mm -hmm. So uh, let me share the screen now. Just a second. Mm -hmm. We are. So yeah, at first I would like to uh, tell you a little bit about myself. So I graduated Moscow State University of Electronic Technology uh, in 2014 and my specialty is English interpreter. And uh, then I went into teaching. Now I've been teaching like uh, more than nine years, uh, really like I'm an English teacher. Uh, last year I got myself a certificate uh, which also gave me a kind of new motivation uh, to go deeper into teaching. Um, and uh, also more than one year I've been teaching on Italki platform, which I really, really like. And I really like that uh, because of Italki, I have students of uh, many countries all over the world. That's just incredible. So, yeah, uh, at first I would like uh, to talk about... Uh, building 
good relationship with student uh, if we're talking about different language levels. Uh, it's really important when we are talking about uh, building good rapport to pay attention to the level of your student. So uh, if we're talking about uh, the student of uh, elementary levels who are just beginners, uh, maybe do you have any ideas which tools can we use uh, to build a good rapport with your student? Just at the very first stage. So you can think about this for some time. Alicia, do we have any ideas or not? No, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> I'm so shy right now. Yeah. Uh, so you see, uh, if the student uh, just begins, it's really important to uh, have a good impression, to have a first good impression. And of course, to start with praising. Um, we have already talked about this with Alicia. So even it's um, elementary group, elementary level, you need to say something like, good, well done, super. Like some very basic phrase, uh, which is quite understandable even for the beginners. Then, if we go further, and if we have uh, more advanced uh, level students, I think that, of course, we need to praise them, but also we should focus more on uh, not only like uh, uh, exclamations, well done, and so on, but also we should pay attention to the correct usage of some grammatical points. Um, for example, your student successfully used the third conditional. So please tell him or her about this, like, oh, you know, I really liked how you used third conditional in this phrase. Well done, keep going. Um, also, if we're talking about more advanced level, as a teacher, you can give to the students uh, more challenging tasks, uh, more difficult ones, and uh, if they uh, do it uh, correctly, also praise them and show that uh, you really appreciate the progress that they did. Like, look, this, uh, if you're talking for pre-intermediate level, for example, uh, look, I gave, you, uh, I gave you a new task from um, advanced book, but you did it great. So again, keep going. So we should uh, pay attention to this kind of difference is really important. So yeah, uh, there are some uh, important things. Of course, to show students the programs, uh, progress, which we have uh, already discussed with Alicia. Yeah, I can see, always be patient with beginners. Absolutely right. You know, uh, on iTalki, uh, on my profile, I have many comments from my student. And uh, I had uh, one student who was a beginner. And after each lesson, he left a comment like, very patient, very patient, very patient teacher. <laughs> it was very cute of him. Uh, but yeah, definitely, it's, uh, it's of great important, uh, importance to be patient. So then, uh, now, as I've already told you, I've been teaching for more than nine years and currently I'm working at uh, language school, at educational center and also on a talkie platform. And uh, now I have many students um, and I suppose that the youngest is about nine year old up to 78 year old, if I'm not mistaken, but maybe I am. And of course, we have different approaches if we're uh, working with young students, teenagers, and adults. At first, I would like to discuss um, your ideas, how to build good relationship with students of younger age. Let's wait maybe for your answers. Alicia, do you have any ideas? Have you ever had young students? Uh, uh, can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so I see here very, very nice comment. Uh, apart from being patient, I see Frediana say, uh, says, or he uh, says, to be empathic. I think this is this is quite important. Uh, yeah. So, and if we're talking about different ages, about uh, um, young students, like primary school. Uh-huh, ask interesting things. Yeah, absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I about young, I mean kids, like uh, less than 10 years old, maybe. Mm -hmm. Ask interesting things, definitely. Uh, also, I, I can, uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, broadcast is opened on my laptop and I can see that uh, someone asked me about certificate. I got sell the certificate. This is Cambridge um, certificate for English teaching as a foreign language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, learn through playing, one of my favorite. Yeah, definitely. So let's speak about kids a bit. Um, as I already told you, so um, it's really important, even with small students, less than 10 years old, uh, to build a good relationship. Because when you're a teacher, you need to be not only a source of knowledge, but you also need to be a friend. Uh, so what do I usually do with my younger student? We play games, if it's online or real life lessons, doesn't matter. Uh, we watch cartoons, we can sing songs. I ask them interesting questions. I can ask uh, them about their pets, about their toys, uh, how did they do at school and so on. Uh, if you're showing sincere interest to your young student, it really helps you to gain uh, to gain the even love maybe, but at least friendship. And it's so uh, so great. I really really appreciate it. Then let's talk a little bit about teenagers. Teenagers, I mean, there's uh, students who are a little bit um, <laughs> or not a bit older than young students like let's say from 10 up to 16 17 year old if we're talking about mm -hmm, teenagers um so teenagers alicia any ideas from you maybe how do you question actually what uh, what is your definition of young kids teenagers young adults this is the question from vanessa lingua dicta yeah 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 i've already told yeah. that uh kids uh i consider kids like less than 10 years old let's say uh teenagers um 10 up to 16 17 and then when a uh, student enters university we can consider this kind of student as adult and <laughs> up to eternity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, in terms of uh, different ages, um, what I see, uh, well, young kids, they are for playing. Uh, mm, teenagers already are starting to understand different concepts, grammar and courses. Uh, they start to think really in a logical way. So uh, the, the, the kind of approach will be very, very different. Uh, so adults already understand so many things. So always I need to just just try, try to like navigate uh, in this in this uh, uh, in the sense that like I can just choose topics grammar topics or just uh, just topics like newspaper texts that are connected with interest of, of the age of the age of what is the most important for this age what are current problems current interest uh, current tendency uh, yeah And uh, with them, you should be on the way. Uh, 
I'm um, I'm a bit uh, older <laughs> than uh, my teenager students, let's say, uh, but still um, I'm trying to be um, to follow the trend, if we can say it. Yeah. So with students, we can talk about applications, uh, TV series, about some important uh, moment, about you know, some important news. Uh, so even a little bit about relationship. Um, also, let's uh, do not forget about that scene that today we are talking how to build a good relationship. I've already told you that it's really, really important to be sincere. Uh, but also, um, you need to trust your student and you need your student to trust you. So uh, how to make it sometimes? Uh, I even had it in my experience. A student can um, ask for your piece of advice. And uh, you need to be really careful with this. And uh, if your student asks you, it means that you're building a really good relationship with it, really strong connection. So your task is uh, just not to ruin it. Uh, so what else? Uh, sometimes I should say, that uh, teen uh, teenager students can uh, learn, uh, not even learn, but can also teach me in some way. Um, because, uh, you know, this generation uh, uh, after the 2000th year is, is quite different from my, from 19th years, uh, let's say. So, yeah, it's also quite interesting experience. Um, yeah, I guess uh, there should be a balance between trying to be cool and trendy. Yeah, re Alexei Rivers, absolutely right. Of course, we need to be teacher. We also need to be a, a kind of model of behavior of some things. Uh, but also it's great, I suppose, when you can be a friend to your student. And then we can talk about adult student that also a little bit different story. Um, so we have already discussed that uh, adult student, in my opinion, I should say, uh, starts uh, when uh, the person enters university. Uh, because in this, uh, at this age, the student usually have a clear goal, uh, clear objectives in their life, are strong motivation, maybe um, many, many hobbies, interests. So what do we usually uh, do with this uh, kind of student? Uh, adult students really benefit from uh, straightforward approaches and they are seeking for speaking practice a lot. So it would be great, even if we're talking about group lesson, uh, it would be great if you are given uh, as much speaking practice uh, as you can, because mostly they are trying to find it uh, because of their job, of uh, their um, trips, and so on. Uh, also, when you're working with adult students, you need to consider their personal interests. Uh, so, for example, if your student really like uh, cooking, that's great. You can uh, speak about recipes, uh, watch uh, videos uh, on YouTube, how to prepare some dishes from different cuisines, um, and so on. You know, when I was a student, I had a teacher uh, who was uh, really passionate about cooking. Um, Quite often we discussed some food, but also she baked something and gave it to us. And it was amazing uh, because <laughs> we really liked her cooking. And uh, it really, really, now I understood uh, that uh, it really helped uh, her to build really strong connection with us. And even now it's more than um, six years as I graduated. I, uh, I'm in contact with her, so that's great. Uh, so, uh, what else do we have? Mm -hmm. 
So uh, point by Hugo Martin, I think it's important to put yourself in their shoes, understand the generation gap, definitely, and adapt the content to what teens are into at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I'm absolutely agree that the trends are changing extremely fast. Uh, and uh, one day you are preparing the lesson and it's still up to date, but the next day, it will be over, so we should be on the wave all the time. Yeah, great points. Uh, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> Karina, uh, have a nice class with your student. Yeah, uh, so next thing. Uh, yeah, also there are some um, points about different age, uh, which I've already pointed out. Next, what's also really important is different personalities. I posted here two kinds of pictures. Any ideas about which personalities I'm going to talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, one girl is so happy, cheerful, but the second is a bit different. So, who are they? Different personalities at our lessons. Mm -hmm. So, Alicia, any ideas? Well, the, the, the girl on the left side looks uh, very happy, uh, extroverted. It looks like, a, like an extroverted yeah. girl. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The second one looks like uh, like a shy girl, also very happy but shy. So we had like a uh, extrovert and shy. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if uh, making a lesson, we should uh, pay much attention to the personality of your student. Uh, so, uh, what does it mean if you are teaching? introvert student let's say uh, let's start with this because it's a bit uh, more challenging uh, so if we are uh, if we are working with a group uh, you need to have a quick look even uh, during the first lesson uh, and uh, decide uh, which type of personalities uh, are there because it's uh, it's uh, of great importance so, and uh, it goes without saying that uh, definitely in each group we have uh, very often introverts. I should say that uh, sometimes it's even 50% of introverts and 50 of extroverts, sometimes mixed. Um, yeah, so it's uh, really important to uh, keep an eye on this. Uh, so, uh, what should we do? as a teacher. Uh, our first task is to help introvert students to overcome their shyness. Uh, to, because even introvert students should benefit from our lesson, should gain some knowledge. So uh, we, need to, uh, we need to push them to study, but really, really, really carefully. Uh, so, what should be uh, done? If you're asking uh, students, do not ask shy students at the first place. Uh, give them some time to prepare themselves for, for the answer. Um, they will feel uh, more confidence and uh, it will be quite useful for them. Uh, so you can start with some extrovert student, yeah, or some mixed up personalities, and then uh, go to uh, introvert. Then, uh, if introvert student uh, gave a right answer, praise them, praise them really sincere, like you did a great job, uh, well done. You even can give them five. Um, it's it's nice, you know, even if we're talking about uh, small small students. Uh, if introvert student is making a mistake, be really really careful while correcting. Uh, 
I mean, sometimes, you know, correcting mistakes, sir, it's also quite a challenging topic uh, because you should be really aware of uh, when it makes sense and when it doesn't. Uh, talking about interest, sometimes for the teacher, it's better to skip some mistakes uh, just to and just to appreciate the trying uh, to answer because for the internet it's already a big step so uh, what else uh, should we should we remember while uh, talking about internet student so, yeah, let's read comments a bit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. General need more time to build confidence. Yeah, Manessa, thanks a lot for this mo note before actively using the language. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree with this point which uh, Vanessa wrote. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's give uh, more time for internet student to gain the confidence, to accept the information, to uh, to accept uh, some grammatical rules which later he or she will be able to use um, mm -hmm. so uh, next next thing uh, also if we are working with group uh, it's really helpful for both teachers and uh, students to put students in pairs I highly recommend it and I do it uh, almost each time when I have group lesson and this is one uh, of the um, thing which I learned uh, during my CELTA course because it gives much more opportunities to speak for the students. So yeah, and if we're talking about group students, um, you can uh, uh, you can connect extrovert and introvert together. Uh, if we make a kind of mix, in this case, uh, extrovert can help introvert student a bit, but also you as a teacher need to cover all the classroom, need to observe all the classroom while the students are speaking. Uh, and if uh, extrovert uh, takes too much, just uh, calm him or her a bit and uh, to give a word to introvert. One more important thing about uh, introverts. I would recommend to avoid difficult questions. Uh, so try to use uh, something uh, not really challenging, something uh, which is uh, he or she can um, ask her quite, con uh, can answer quite confidently. And uh, and uh, avoid uh, open questions. Open questions. It's like um, where do you think, and so on. So you can ask, does he like uh, pizza? And uh, name the introvert student. And if the introvert student doesn't have much choice in uh, answering, like only yes or no. <laughs> he or she will benefit from it, um, of course. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, let's talk about extroverts. Sometimes it it's, uh, also can be quite challenging uh, for teachers also. Uh, what uh, should we do? At first, that's great that you have extroverts in your classroom, let's say. Uh, because sometimes so when you're asking a difficult question, no one can uh, answer it. Only extrovert here is ready to answer. That's great. Just appreciate it. <laughs> um, it helps to avoid the work in this sense and so on. So at first, you need to encourage them for sure. Compliment the extra students when they have very good questions, uh, when they participate enthusiastically, when they cooperate quite well in group work. So 
all the classroom can benefit from uh, taking part um, from being together in group with uh, extrovert. Uh, but anyway, you should uh, consider, you should remember that extroverts can be distracted really, really easy. So try to minimize, uh, minim minimize distraction um, in your classroom. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Alexei, I'm absolutely agree. Like sometimes pretty hard to correct mistakes of an extrovert because they don't care about accuracy. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's absolutely that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, um, I also, of course, I have some extroverts, and sometimes I even need to, um, uh, how to say, need to break this flow of speech by clapping my hands or something like this. Like, okay, guys, now let's uh, talk about different things and so on. So it's really important to stop uh, them on time. <laughs> so yeah, just to be aware of this. Um, so. What else should we say? Yeah, also I've already told about group discussion. Extrovert can be a leader in some presentation aspects and so on. So just uh, uh, keep, keep an eye on them because each uh, of us can benefit from cooperation with them. So two types of students, yeah? And uh, let's just revise some important things. For internet praise, to gain their trust, put the students in pairs with some more active students, avoid difficult questions. And if we talk about extrovert, minimize distraction, make group discussion, encourage them. <clears throat> Next uh, task will be for the audience. So if you're watching our webinar, please look at uh, this page <laughs> we have a student he's a programmer so it's three year old and he has lessons twice a week so quite regularly wants to improve speaking skills because he is uh, writing english written english is quite good but he isn't really ready for big talks but remember that we need to uh, gain uh, trust we need to build a good rapport with this student let's discuss what can we do so i'm waiting for your ideas before i will uh, tell what i did in this situation yeah this is actually the nice uh, nice uh, case mm -hmm. i would even say that actually very common very mm -hmm. common yeah. we don't have any comments but we have now the problems on the like the problem on the world that there is so much access that that we can hear we can see mm -hmm. but when is the moment that we can uh, start to learn to speak this is something that we are just missing that you can cover actually when you are regular speaking with your with your teacher um Mm. You see, this is the hard question. This is really hard question. This is a challenge. So we have no <laughs> comments. No comments. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, wait a bit. <clears throat> uh, yeah. yeah, programmers. Uh, this very special kind of uh, people, and they uh, got used to working uh, with computers. Yeah, <laughs> and with computer, you don't need to, to speak a lot. So, what do we do? How to build a good rapport? Mm -hmm. Okay, Vanessa. Mm, so, now I can read your question. Like, do you regular teach group on a talkie? What size? Can you share a little more of your experience with groups, particularly students of different backgrounds? So, yeah, while we are waiting about, uh, uh, while we, we are, uh, sorry, while we are waiting for the um, answer about this uh, case, I can, yeah, share a bit my experience. So, yeah, I'm working with groups. Uh, on a talkie, I don't teach groups. I'm teaching groups um, at my educational center. Uh, so, 
people they are quite different uh, from 24 year old if i'm not mistaken up to uh, 67 um with um so yeah as i already told you it's really important to um put students in a group uh, in a small couples in small groups to speak a bit uh, a bit more because if we are asking uh, 11 people just uh, let's say can you answer this question lisa please uh, and if they are uh, if they are answering just one by one they have really small amount of speaking practice which is uh, definitely not enough and if we're sharing them into pairs that's great they have much more uh, speaking activities mm -hmm. so aha uh -huh. good point finally we have one idea about this student who is a programmer ask many questions slow down give him time to speak at the pace comfortable for him some people are slow talkers even in the old language yeah definitely uh, uh guys great ideas closed mm -hmm. absolutely agree so what i did in this situation like let's say more than one year ago i got this kind of student which is one of my favorite now uh, yeah really regular lessons and he spoke quite slowly but i should say that uh, quite grammatically correct um at first i spoke quite a lot <laughs> i should say uh i always try to reduce my teacher talking time uh because uh while uh, teaching it's not my task to speak a lot about the students but sometimes you need to build a good relationship while speaking and while opening yourself a bit. So at first, I was sharing some ideas about myself. Next, of course, I asked many questions about hobbies, about work, about some basic things uh, like what did you do at the weekend and so on. Then, step by step, as we learned uh, each other better and better, um, I, you know, I even could understand the name of his mom, for example, or that his mom had a birthday last week, and he was so surprised. And uh, I suppose that it helped me to gain uh, um, to get to gain his respect. And after some small points, which I showed that I'm really concerned about him, I'm really interested in not only in our, his booking lessons with me, but also in his personal life. Uh, in this case, sir, he started to speak more and more. Then, uh, while I'm uh, studying uh, new grammatical points, uh, we are trying he was a student of my uh, language so he was also russian um we try not to use russian at all so even if we have uh, new words i'm trying uh, um, i would like uh, him to explain this word in uh, english or uh, without using dictionary using only um uh, using only context and that also helps really really helps and now he speaks so much <laughs> that <laughs> I, I i can say that uh, i speak much less than he um so next thing uh motivation yeah we have already uh, spoke quite a lot about motivation with alicia i just wanted uh, wanted to point out uh, some basic things uh usually people uh, study language for career growth this is the biggest motivation i should say and if you watch our slide you can see that uh, more than half of our responses are for work and career and i should say that uh, this is a really good motivation then travelings school I mean studies, universities, and family, family reasons, maybe some relationship, and so on. 
unfortunately, also uh, during the last two years, let's say, uh, traveling uh, motivation for traveling um, has reduced a bit due to um, some more understandable reasons. But still, uh, learning uh, motivation for working and for um, growing your career is still one of uh, the best. Um, next, uh, I would like to point out some modern tools which I use for building good uh, record with my students. <coughs> so, uh, which I use quite often. At first, Trello. Uh, well, uh, social media and opportunities I talk and uh, let's speak about each of them uh, in more details. So, yeah, let's start with Trello. Uh, Trello, I also found out about this uh, during uh, the previous I talk webinar and uh, I use it now every day, like let's say from early morning up to the evening. Uh, so we have a board. Uh, I can make uh, as many boards as I, are, as I need. So I have uh, boards for Italki students, for my private students, for my uh, students from educational center and language school. Then for uh, then on each board, I can make some additional board with the name of my students. And then uh, for each of the students, mm -hmm, really interesting point about Notion. Um, and then. For each student, uh, I have big, big, big list. I make uh, their three tables. What do we do next time? What do we do for the home task? And some uh, profile. A profile means some uh, personal things. Uh, next time, yeah, it's a, uh, oops, sorry. Next time, it's quite understandable. So what we're going to make uh, next time, which book do we use, uh, how to check the home task. In home task, uh, we can, um, I write some exercises which I ask to do for the home. Um, at home, um, in the table, which is called words, I put some new vocabulary. We also make kind of a vocabulary dictation each two or three lessons. And in profile, I can write age, city, names of the child, birthday date, uh, or the name of the dog, um, hobbies, interests, and so on and so forth. So some very important uh, things which I, um, which I supposed to be uh, to be useful in the future. What else? Also, I really like in Trello that I can use it uh, on my phone, on my computer, on my laptop, everywhere. So even if I'm in Metro and my student asks me like, Natalia, what is the home task for tonight? I can just uh, go to the Trello application and uh, point it out from there. Highly recommended. Next, uh, with uh, many of my students, we wish uh, social media. This is just an example of my <laughs> WhatsApp screen. Uh, so, what do we do? Uh, if it's a group, uh, group lesson, we can make group chat. I uh, post there some tasks, uh, home tasks, vocabulary, even I can uh, send jokes, memes, or it's really, really funny. Uh, students are also sharing it with me. And I'm pretty sure that it helped me a lot to build a good rapport with my uh, with my group. And uh, now we have a really strong connection, really good relationship. So I highly recommend you to use social media. Uh, mostly I use WhatsApp. Uh, so yeah, Telegram not so often. Uh, sometimes <coughs> I can even use um, Instagram, but not very often, just with my favorite uh, students, I should say, with whom we are more than teacher and student, let's say, like friends, maybe. By the way, I have a question. Which social media, if you use them, which application do you use uh, for for your lessons? So, please, 
write down if you have such. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and while you are typing it, I can uh, also talk about opportunities on italki. I suppose that many of you uh, have used italki, right? So, uh, not long ago, Telegram, mm -hmm. VK, mm, OK, Skype. Mm -hmm. uh, Vanessa, how do you feel about students who want to connect to you on Facebook after just one or two lessons? Uh, I don't like it, and uh, I don't accept uh, they, uh, they not invitation, but um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't accept it. Uh huh. <laughs> Telegram. Uh huh. You know, uh, my students also um, pushed me to use TikTok. Oh my god! I thought that I'm too old for this, <laughs> but not yet. <laughs> so yeah, um, let's talk a bit about uh, opportunities on Italki. That's a really a uh, useful thing, uh, which was introduced on a talk not so long ago, let's say uh, three months, no, three, four months ago, I suppose, after New Year. Uh, sometimes you can see uh, some reminders for your previous students. So if student uh, hasn't booked a lesson for a long time with you, you can just uh, see such kind of reminder on the bottom of your screen when you join in uh, italki and um, you can uh, press message uh, open in message there will uh, you will have uh, this kind of window uh, there are some uh, ready to use templates you can use them oops sorry not thanks yet <laughs> yeah you can use these templates uh, also you can make your own so what can you do? Offer extra lesson slots or, or offer some additional minutes of the lesson. So I can um, recommend uh, using it. Why, why not? Uh, it also helps to build a good wrapper, definitely. Um, so uh, let's, uh, yeah, I'm always done. So thanks for your attention a lot. I suppose that I can uh, stop sharing my screen. Oops, I, mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> oh, I can see myself again. So, and I just wanted to read uh, some more recommendations of uh, using um, some applications. VK, yeah, Telegram. I, I see, I can see that Telegram is quite popular, yeah. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's amazing. There are so many interesting questions, uh, information, insights. Just only reading the chat that we had not the chance to pick up them all to say them out loud. But yeah. it gives me just this impression like uh, it's so good to be together. It's so good to share things together. And it's, it's so good like to do things together because, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I really like that our audience is so active today <laughs> because when we feel feedback, it really pushes uh, to it really push to make something. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's you feel. Um. Yeah. Mm, you know, personally, me, I uh, didn't. Uh, uh, I didn't push my student uh, to book another lesson, but we can just offer some extra minutes or just to ask uh, how um, how they are doing and so on. So sometimes it uh, really helps. But personally, me, I prefer using social medias. Uh, like you can just uh, answer to a story on Instagram feed of your student, put like or to send a video or mem to your um, student. That's great. Uh, so, and also me as a student, uh, now I've been studying Italian for more than one year, and I also have a teacher on Italki. And uh, with my teacher, uh, we are in a connection on WhatsApp, 
on Instagram. And even if I don't have any lessons with him during the week, usually I have uh, regular lessons like once or two, twice a week, uh, I can ask him or her and he, uh, he can help me. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I suppose that it also helped a lot uh, for gaining um, a good rapport and respect between each other. Hmm. I see here something very interesting uh, about uh, sending reminders or informations. Um, Vanessa is is uh, writes is writing. My impression is that my students feel rather or bothered when being constantly reminded to take another lesson. Uh, this is actually hard because it requires, this is a process to understand, to know the, the student so that you know, so that you can feel as a teacher, okay, right now is the moment that I can uh, send uh, this kind of very short message. So to remind that I'm thinking about you, I know that we are having classes and this is very hard to answer this question because I recommend you to use opportunities to send you to send texts. However, this is always a very individual experience. Yeah. And taking where is my student and where I am, uh, how far I can go mm -hmm. with my message, with sending my message. Yeah. Um, there's also here says I never use opportunity. I don't want to pressure someone. So this this is very hard because this is about relations uh, with our students. That how far I should go with my this specific student so that he feels <laughs> motivated, yeah, yeah. nice, and, and not pressured. Yeah, definitely. And good point uh, from Amos Balika. Uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing the name. Uh, not correctly. I wanted to study Albanian, then I stopped. I'm sure that if my teacher on Italki would have wrote to me, I would have booked another lesson. That's great. Yeah, and that's what you're talking about, Alicia. That depends on the personality itself, definitely. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I suppose that uh, we are almost over. Um, so, yeah, also... Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, our recording of the webinar will be still available. <laughs> That's great. So if we skip um, something, we can rewatch it. Yeah. yeah. And what's the best suggestion do you have for new tutors to attract new students? Um, I suppose that as for as for me, according to my experience, you need to be professional. You need to be positive. You need to be sincere. And you need to show real interest and real passion in what you are doing. In this case, sir, well, your student will be addicted to you. <laughs> Just believe me. Yeah. So thank my you side, all. Yeah. I would like to thank you so much for your uh, for for being here. I hope we we had a great job. Actually, I hope you are happy okay. and. Um, from my side and thank you so much for your comments uh, for all what you have uh written here. really yeah you're right so thank you guys uh, thank you all see you next time maybe <laughs> yeah bye bye bye